I think you're counting. I thought the clap was the signal. Oh, yeah, that's about that. Okay, let's do it again. Sounds great. <laughs> Good for bloopers. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Johnny's Reviews. I'm Johnny. Thank you for visiting us here today. And today, on the other side of the table we have a really special guest with us today guys today she is I actually met her at a coffee shop believe it or not and she actually just really intrigued me and I wanted her to come on this podcast talk about a lot of the stuff that she does ladies and gentlemen she is a holistics coach makes her own kombucha believe it or not she lets her own food ferment if you can just picture that real quick and she is an avid singer and songwriter. We will get to that once we get to that. But ladies and gentlemen, this is Jade. Jade, if you want to just say hey to the camera, Hi. say hey to everybody. Hello. <laughs> Guys, she actually intrigued me on a lot of stuff that she does. Holistic. Uh, she's a holistic coach. Um, I got a little bit of a brief detail, but if you want to just go ahead and tell everybody what you do, yeah. how, where, where you started, just go ahead and just introduce it that way. Give a little brief intro. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a holistic health and wellness coach, and essentially that means I work um, with clients to find the best possible ways for them to understand uh, how to nourish themselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Okay. So it's kind of like a whole body approach to health. Um, there's a lot of different angles and, yeah. um, um, that I take with that, but um, as simple as I can put it is that it's a whole a whole body approach to health and uh, um, as natural as possible kind of allowing and, and giving people the opportunity to look inward and and um, become more attuned to what right. their own bodies are telling them right. so yeah that's awesome uh, you know that's just kind of the same things like do you have a let's just say, how did you start kind of going into the realm of this? Like, why did you start doing it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like my story is pretty familiar in mm. that I I started leaning into alternative medicine, okay. um, alternative avenues to, my, to health because right, of my right, own right. health. Um, so when I started to experience um, something called celiacs, which is ah, autoimmune, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of inflammation in the body, malabsorption of nutrients, um, I, my brother's actually a holistic practitioner, so okay. um, he really kind of like steered me towards the alternative uh, health path. And um, delving into that myself, I it completely blew me away. I, okay. I thought I was just kind of like going for some um, maybe short-term answers or maybe alternative answers uh, that I felt like might, you know, might be like quick, like herbal supplements yeah, or yeah, yeah. going to a chiropractor for a little bit, but it kind of opened this Pandora's box for me of health. Um, uh, and um, I began to understand the effect that uh, health and nutrition has on mental and emotional health. And that I, totally I agree blew me away. To, to that to yeah. a certain extent. I really do. Um, you know, that's everybody has their own sort of goal when it comes to health. Mm -hmm. And that. I started realizing that there's no there's no one way specifically to yeah. to kind of say okay I'm a healthy person right. or or you know some things kind of just are around the board just they kind of make it seem like it's a a okay this is a generic way to lose weight or yeah. a generic way to stay healthy or a generic way to do this so I, I can kind of understand a lot of where you're coming from with that yeah. I, I really do um, a lot of people don't know that about this. Like a lot of people aren't really open to, to this because it's not really famous in the realm of pharmaceutical companies, right. doctors. Would you agree with that? Or absolutely, absolutely. Like that that part right there. I kind of just I don't know if it's just because of the whole business purpose. Uh, yeah. Like that. I feel like maybe that could be open up at like a lot of different. Um, ways and paths that you can actually start getting your health back in line yeah where would you where would you start with let's just say a someone that actually wanted to come up to you and said hey i really want to get myself back in shape how do they yeah. come and present themselves to you like yeah. what what do they say to you whenever you they're asking for your help yeah um a lot of times it's uh well it's different it's different for everybody yeah. and yeah, that's kind of like what you were saying right. is that um, there's no one path to health. 
Um, I'm going to use the maybe overused term journey. Everybody's journey looks Everybody's different. Journey. Yeah. yeah Everyone's journey looks different. It is. I use, I even use it. I was like, yeah. that's my journey. I do. Yeah. Like, I know what you mean by that. But hey, you take ownership for it and, right. and that's a big deal. And for, for some people it's leaning more heavily into how they view themselves, the perspective right. that they operate out of and, uh, mentally where they're coming from and how that's affecting their health. Um, right. With other people, it's more of a physical uh, wellness plan, um, depending on what kind of movement they want to embody, whether it's somebody in their later years of life who would benefit from more of a, let's let's have a daily walk, yeah. um, grounding our, our, feet, our feet to the earth, um, uh, so going for daily barefoot walks, whereas other people want to improve on their performance or they want to um, maybe gain some muscle in areas that they don't have. So, uh, I mean, as far as like uh, health in, in its totality, um, everybody's journey looks different, but if someone were to come to me um, and say, hey, I'm struggling with um, depression or anxiety, and I really want to tackle that, um, mm, yeah, yeah. it would be my passion and my um, intention to sit with them and tackle that whole body approach because, you know, if you're, let's just say you're coming to me and saying, I'm really, I'm really struggling with anxiety and I want to get gotcha. my health back together. Um, we're going to sit down and look at how your sleep cycles are. What, what's your hydration looking like? Right. Um, let's talk about circadian rhythm. How, uh, what's your movement and, and how can we improve on that within, um, the, the physical, um, intention that you you want so mm -hmm. I know it's such a it's such a broad answer to a specific question but it really just depends on the person um, and where they are yeah and you know it might be just because uh, I mean we're made out of a lot of systems yeah. so like all of those things kind of make up you so yeah. so really you kind of just focus on like eating healthy maybe like if that is the right track and you're not kind of like having a healthy fitness uh, kind of going symbiotic with that yeah or even going to sleep at the, uh, that all kind of starts kind of saying oh it's delaying certain things because yeah. all of those things tend to coexist with each other Absolutely. They, they all do and it took me a while to understand that yeah and you know that's that's why I wanted you to come on here because uh, when I I had I had anxiety before yeah you know I had I had a uh, people would necessarily would go to a simple pill mm -hmm. or they would go for something that they don't know what's in it mm -hmm. they don't know what's actually going on and how their body's going to process it yeah. when it could be as simple as looking at the stuff that far closely and looking at themselves much more closely and saying you know what maybe it's other reasons why i'm feeling this way and that's that's the reason why i'm i'm kind of like okay i'm more open about the the hormonal side the right. the sleep side the fitness side all of, all of that is kind of symbiotic with each other like it, it all coexists with each other and whenever i i see i see something that kind of would intrigue me on that i would yeah. want to learn more yeah and you know that's that's kind of like the journey the journey yeah, that that right. kind of gets me um, to understand that there's all these open doors that can that can get you to understand that maybe this could work for you. Mm -hmm. Like it might not work for somebody else, maybe due to like other purposes, mm -hmm. but maybe this could work for you. Yeah. And um, having that ideal way of thinking maybe can open up. You're right, like a Pandora's box right. can actually get people to look upon. What if it's just my sleep? Yeah. Like what if it's just that I need to focus on? Right. What if it's just the way that I'm eating? Or because. I think for me anyway energy is brought up by how you really are like it's a literal way your body is a literal way of what you're kind of wanting it to be like mm -hmm. if you really want to be as healthy as the next person you look at your body and you say are, am i happy with it am yeah. i happy with how i am and you know that, that really does intrigue me about you so when when somebody does come and say how how many of those actually are more about depression more yeah. about the the anxious because now i think that's a big that skyrockets like right. anxiety depression and you know how would you go about that like right. what would you say to that specific person and, and not a generic term but right i'm pretty sure you've seen some extreme cases of if anything of depression yeah. yeah specifically um in you know in the mental health like subject or field um, I think that 
there's a, there's a balance, um, what I understand to be a balance of validation and also empowerment. So mm -hmm. it's a combination of validating um, my clients where they're at um, and giving them that room and space to right. understand and, 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 and know and um, for some people it's accepting that this is the reality of, the, of where they're at emotionally. Gotcha. But then it's also giving them the tools and helping them um, understand that, that there is a step to empowerment that can yeah. give them maybe a level up would be the, wor the word or um, an opportunity for them to um, ex like through gratitude and, mm -hmm. and, and change um, for them to step out of a season that dark. Oh, okay. um, and there's that also appreciation for um, you know learning to walk in the dark and, and what that shows us and that pain is the greatest teacher and that um, we can learn from the things that we've been through Makes but sense. also balancing that with um, what are we going to do to uh, tackle depression. So um, I know that like for, for extreme cases where um, people are having experiences where they can't get out of bed, um, I'm going to scale it back down and give maybe like a small story example okay. of when we wake up, like let's just say everyday example, when we wake up and we're feeling a little blue. I'm going to use the word blue. Okay. Um, uh, let's just say myself. I'm, I'm feeling a little blue today. Um, I'm going to give myself the time to wallow in that experience. So to understand and know that, okay, I'm feeling a little off today, maybe out of sorts. All right. Um, and then if it, you know, kind of give myself that space. But then when it becomes too much, kind of uh, whether it's the rest of the day or right. in a couple of days, I'm still feeling a little, little off. Um, I... I use kind of uh, maybe an example of like a pie chart. We all okay. have a pie, a pie chart of, of health. And um, that's when it's my opportunity to uh, look at that pie chart of health and say, how are my relationships? How, how is my, and then going through the hydration, nutrition, my sleep cycles, um, uh, have I been moving? For me, it's being outside. So yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it's by water, if I'm stuck inside, if I'm you know living in a snowy city gotcha. and I'm stuck inside all winter, oh, perhaps that could so. be playing a role on my mood. So I, you know, it's it's simple and it's complex. Mm -hmm. But um, for that everyday example, um, a lot of times it's oh well, you know what? I'm I'm having a l there's a little tension in my relationships. There's a little tension in my familial or friendships or romantic relationships, and yeah. that could be causing you to feel a little bit of out of sorts. Um, and then um, specifically with clients, it's my intention is to tackle also the nutrition, which you can't. Um, address depression and the emotionality and and the steps that we're taking to hop out of that without tackling the foods that the we're food, eating. Yeah. so yeah. You, all of that the, the food that we eat yeah. is that would be necessarily linked up to how we feel yes yes yeah they say that I agree um, with that. yeah they say the 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 gut is the second brain okay yeah okay you know and mm, i never really looked at what i ate necessarily much more closely because it, you know it, we're young I guess and it never it never really kind of occurred to us mm -hmm. to uh, like how to really balance a healthy nutrition healthy healthy fitness and healthy uh, way a healthy lifestyle that can actually benefit you in the long run I think we all reach longevity yeah. more than anything yeah. and people want quick answers people want you know they want to be able to feel better quickly and you know that right there kind of gets me to understand that there is there is no dir like direct path. So when I m would eat something really crappy or yeah. something like that, I w I would know. I think now I would know intuitively. It's like okay, this is what I, this is why I feel this way. This mm -hmm. is why I feel tired, or this is why I feel funky. Is because right. of what I ate the Brain night fog. before. Yeah, and uh, it's and that all kind of goes back to the amount of energy that I give like yeah. things so like when when I talk about like I do a lot of things mm -hmm. I didn't look at the the food portion mm -hmm. back then on how lazy I was or how I never really related it to how I was going to be like later on yeah. so whenever I knew how to time manage and knew how to eat a little bit more clearly I think that's whenever I started realizing like oh I don't need to eat at this time or yeah. I, I can do this. How do you feel about like all these fats? Like uh, maybe like the, all these different diets that yeah. kind of like, I'm pretty sure you get a lot yeah. of those, uh, a yeah. lot like, um, 
the intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. you know, keto, uh, f- the, I mean, vegans, vegetarians. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about those? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, um, as I imagine anybody in this field, I have a lot of maybe thoughts on on, on these things. Yeah. Um, so I, I think they can be beneficial for mm-hmm. people. Um, I think they can be beneficial in seasons used to reset the gut. Gotcha. Um, I think they can be used uh, to facilitate kind of like a, a cleansing and um, and can prove to be like a really good thing for people. Uh, specifically keto, keto is great. Um, but I don't think that it's a long-term thing. So I don't think that we can maintain maintain the, our, the yeah our body in, in the state the of ketosis, ketosis. yeah okay. for right. for an extended period of time mm-hmm. for decades. Um, but for me and and working with my clients, it comes down to meeting them where they are and allowing them to become in touch with the way their body responds to the foods that they eat. Mm-hmm. Whether it's uh, removing food for two weeks and reintroducing it and see how their body responds. And I'm sure that when you kind of uh, shifted your diet and cleaned it up a bit, you noticed yourself becoming more sensitive to things like processed sugar. Yeah. <laughs> one is l- milk. I, milk. D- okay. Dairy would be a big one for me. And yeah. like, yeah, you're right about sugar being like, you start feeling very achy around the, the joints yeah. and you start feeling really weird about like uh, the energy is just there and it's gone. You yeah. start feeling it. M- mine would be dairy. Yeah. My, I think that's kind of the, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. Yeah. I don't know if it, if it's just the way my body would react to it, uh-huh. but uh, man, dairy's in everything. Yeah. So like, it's hard to kind of disclude that from like a good balanced meal, right. I guess you could say. So when I realized that I was like, oh man, like I don't feel right whenever mm-hmm. I drink milk, I started looking at all like coconut milk. That's right. literally my favorite milk now. And mm-hmm. I drink it on the daily. I get, I do get a lot of sass from my roommates. Like, why do you drink <laughs> coconut milk? I'm like, you, you can get lactose free. Yeah. I'm like, I just love how it tastes. And I just heard the coconut's really good. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think people realize that uh, maybe you can look at other things like that that can help you balance out the the weirdness in your gut mm-hmm. that can kind of tell you, like, oh, this isn't processing. Like, enzymes aren't processing right. Or mm-hmm. the, amount, the amount of meat is, like, not processing right. And, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know. That's that's kind of, like, maybe people's sensitivity on food has yeah. that skyrocketed a lot in the past oh, years. Oh, absolutely. Just, and, and it comes down to the quality of the food within our oh, food okay, system. Oh, okay, okay. So it's more, hom- are you saying, like, hormonal? Like, hormonal? Um, yeah, and uh, you, you talked about dairy. Dairy's a processed dairy or pasteurized dairy is a high inflammatory food. So is um, processed wheat. Oh, and that's okay, why there's okay. been, you know, an influx among many other reasons of celiacs and people with gluten intolerances. Um, it's it's more so going back to the quality of the of, of the bread that we make. Bread used to be water, um, you know, uh, whole wheat flour. Gotcha. Um, and now we kind of, and, and salt and thyme. Gotcha. And, and, and it was something that was fermented. And if we scale back and kind of look at the way we make bread now and how we identify bread, it's... It's like cutting corners oh, and yes. trying to like really just make it as mm-hmm. fast as they can. Make it as fast as they can, which means preservatives, additives, things that really aren't meant for the human body to absorb. Um, and that can um, impact the way we absorb the things that we're meant to eat. Gotcha. Um, so, you know... Uh, yeah, and so dairy, um, I was going to mention something uh, called raw dairy. Raw dairy. Um, so the pasteurization of dairy uh, came, I want to say, um, more than 50 years ago. Um, and in an effort to be able to send dairy all across the country and preserve it for a longer time. So what they do is they heat up milk that comes from, um, you know, an animal and to kill the bad bacteria. Bad bacteria in order to store it, like have a longer mm. shelf life. But what we do when we kill the bad bacteria is we kill the good bacteria too. And so- the, So there's no benefit. There's no benefit. Kind of like there, there's little to no benefit. And um, and a lot of times um, the food in its natural state- gotcha. Has the enzymes and the bacteria in order for us to process it. And when we heat up milk and, um, and dairy and pasteurize it through this process called pasteurizing, we kill the enzymes that are actually intended to help us digest. And so we've seen um, over the last, um, um, you know, f- few decades an influx of f- uh, dairy intolerance or okay. lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and you talked about celiac. celiac. So, so um, 
and that's more on the bread side. Yeah, I would that's assume? basically um, um, an allergy. Okay. Uh, uh, and an allergic response to wheat. Mm-hmm. So wheat and uh, f- flour, flours and um, breads, you know, pastries. Um, it's in a lot. It's in <laughs> as, a lot. You, as you were saying, like you, you discovered that milk's in yeah, a lot in a of lot the things, of things that you love. Yeah. And like soy would be a good. Like I think of another one. I'd, I don't know a lot about soy, yeah. but I mean, like with, is that like a, a lot of that have to do with a lot of the gluten stuff that would have to be going on was because of the celiac? Soy, thing? soy is, um, um, it's unrelated to celiac, but there are a lot of people who do have soy allergies and soy is something um, that's been overproduced in, in the United States and genetically modified. So um, when we genetically modify something, we take it out of its natural heirloom that's state crazy. of being, which is crazy in order to mass produce it, which... Um, um, we can understand why we're doing that. We're giving food to making sure everyone's fed, but at the expense of our health. Right. So, so, so that that gives me like goosebumps a little bit because when I went on this health journey, mm-hmm. I I started realizing a lot of the food that I would buy is mm-hmm. a little bit more expensive than the cheap mm-hmm. processed stuff. Why? Why? Why would you think that would be the reason? Is it just because it's easier to make, or is it just like businesses tend to be a lot more productive with people buying cheaper food yeah uh, why the process stuff is cheaper yeah like i, I don't um, understand as like if we want to be healthy yeah. like you know that's that's that would be prime number one to kind of change the the way that we would look at yeah food honestly. well when we I, I think when we go back to like our ancestors food didn't food wasn't easy to get right um it it may have been easy to pick but baking and things like that if you wanted um let's go back to like maybe a a few generations to um, so my family's from scandinavia norway and sweden and um uh when they came to canada uh, in the turn of the century there there were uh there are a lot of like pie recipes in my uh family's lineage and Pies didn't take what they take now. It's, you know, a 20, 30 minute process. Right. If you wanted a pie, you were going to have to spend most of the day preparing a pie. And <laughs> so it was a hard earned, it was a hard earned um, dessert. Right, right. So uh, kind of going off of that, uh, things, I think good things take time. Uh, I think that comes with gardening. You know, if we're, um, th- we have a few organic farmers um, in the area, urban farmers mm-hmm. and um, and the surrounding Central Florida area, and they work really hard. They're out in the sun and the heat, and um, but it's that it's that uh, experience where I'm getting to go to the farmers market and shake the hand of the people that grew my food, and there becomes that appreciation. And we, right. when we learn to have that appreciation, we're willing to pay extra, pay, extra. pay a little more for it because mm-hmm. we understand where it's come from. But but regarding your question, I do think that. Um, a lot of it isn't really authentic. A lot, a lot of additives, preservatives, poor oils, which in mass production are really cheap to make. Yes, that that's one of the big ones too. I, when I started realizing that, like, like canola oil yeah. or like or virgin oil, I, I yeah. don't know which ones are. I just I, I stick to coconuts. Really, like yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think I've just done a lot of my research and kind of said maybe coconuts is the probably the mm-hmm. best way to go. Avocado oil maybe. Yeah. But. I, I eat avocados on the daily now, and yeah. it's just the the amount of healthy fats I think that you can get on your in your body, and it kind of I, I think it's kind of like a cleaner energy source mm-hmm. that you can burn off. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, that's the thing that kind of like I guess I started understanding uh, yeah. was uh, that it's just the way you cook things, and the way that like if you start kind of cooking and meal prepping your own stuff you yeah. start realizing what you put in your body right. you start realizing a lot of things the smaller detailed things i can kind of say this can give me a little bit of an edge mm-hmm. like protein wise or yeah. you know energy wise and you know i think all of that can kind of go you're right by the what you put in your body because mm-hmm. that can kind of give you the energy to go and have a much more better flourishing relationship right can give you um like better confidence and the way that you want to present yourself in business, Mm -hmm. all those different aspects. I think, yeah, interconnected. And that, that's when I started kind of going on this little, little bit of a health rant of kind of saying like, you know, what if it's not the three meals a day, like the three, like Mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, and dinner, maybe it's not the, the right way that eat every two hours to kind of gain muscle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know. I, 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 
look at what looks um what started going on with my body and what started realizing that maybe there's a different way to kind of look at it mm -hmm. and uh, you know growing up it's like football and and uh sports right. and you know you have to eat a lot or you have to kind of burn off a lot of sugar real quick and, yeah and and yeah, like the what, what they would feed us in schools i think that's what kind of got me to look back and say you know that's why i was kind of like hormonally jacked up yeah or kind of like maybe that affected me more than i realized right yeah. right and you know it just kind of started clicking to me so mm -hmm. i don't know how much of a like change that does at like hormonal levels either. yeah you know i i don't know like do you have any kind of insight on that one like on hormones yeah. and stuff like that that can maybe affect the way that you feel oh maybe absolutely your sleeping schedules oh, and stuff for like sure. that for sure hormone yeah hormone balancing um yeah hormones play a huge role um in uh your everyday life um, and when it comes to holistic health tackling the uh, endocrine system in the way that you're operating a lot of people have thyroid problems um, thyroid used to be something that was assumed to be for like a um, for for people like kind of like actually like diabetes oh, okay. you, you kind of assume diabetes used to be for people who were in a certain generation and were over a certain weight and now we're starting to see that kind of trickle in to um, children and uh, and and this is all a correlation this is all correlated to our diet and lifestyle hmm. and the way we live um, but I wanted to go back and kind of tackle um, the the diet specific diets for okay. everybody so um, I think that like hearing these conversations I know they used to overwhelm me um, it's almost like you hear you know eat keto, you know, eat high fat, right. eat low carb, low carb. Eat low carb, high fat, you know, this is the way you should do it. That's the way you should do it. And I think for me, one of the hugest, um, uh, pinnacle moments in my health journey was realizing that, um, my voice is the most important voice for the right. choices that I make and, and for my body. And so I know you mentioned keto and intermittent fasting. If that's been something that you've really seen yourself flourish with, then that's something that works for you. Right. And and that's uh, you know, and that's something that uh, we can get behind and support. Um, I think diets become problematic when they become dogmatic. And when I say dogmatic, what do you mean by that? so essentially like um, I see this maybe in more communities, so, uh, maybe more some more communities than other communities. Uh -huh. um, but I get uh, or I hear a lot of um, this is how it works it for works. me. Yeah. This is how it will always work for me. And this is how it should work for you. So do you get a lot of that? Then? Do you yeah. get a lot of people kind of like I'm sticking to what I'm I know. I'm sticking to it. Yeah. I'm sticking to how I my parents raised me. Absolutely. How my religion tells yeah. me. How ethical my reasons. Doctor, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I would see that honestly happening yeah. on the daily. Even like kind of like bodybuilders or right. fitness, fitness like people that kind of would say this is the way that it's been done, mm -hmm. or this is the way. Like the the thing is that there's a lot of technological like technological advances that have happened in even just a year span, yeah. and so kind of just correlating that with how long ago was the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilder right. type to now, I think now is the time to kind of question what we do know now about mm -hmm. health and what how to kind of um surpass the ideas of what we thought our parents thought was okay mm -hmm. and say no you got to look at yourself individually right. and kind of make your own synopsis and make your own decision on yeah. what you want to put in your body how you kind of determine what you want to do with it and how you're going to feel later yeah. on because i think you like I would I go back to longevity. I, th right. I think everybody everybody wants to kind of feel a certain way, g great, mm -hmm. all year long, or maybe even look better or mm -hmm. feel better. And the backlash, I think that one would be a big big factor. So like, how do you deal with that? Like, what do you what do you say? Like, do they come to you for help or yeah. do they come to you just to bash? Like, like, a lot of times, um, when when people come with a. Um, restricted diets mm -hmm. and the unwillingness to change there's a lot there's a lot more behind that right. because what happens when we say um, this is how it is for me um, and 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 we're unwilling to change despite maybe the negative repercussions that is uh, taken the toll that it's taken on our body yeah um, there's kind of like a, a shame cycle that is maybe promoting that in that yeah. we um, if we admit that the choices we made brought us to where we are, we have to 
we have to come to that conclusion that um, we made mistakes that that brought us to the present moment. And when we do that, it's people get instead of saying like, okay. Um, all right, um, you know, this diet, uh, the Adkins diet circa 1990s <laughs> did yeah. not work for me and it caused me these health problems. What am I going to do to empower myself to step out of that? People instead get caught in that shame cycle of, of kind of like woe is me and, and the victim mentality. And I feel like with that um, negative uh, emotional cycle, yeah. there's um, maybe a pride or, or an ego protecting it's like a the, social I made a mistake. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I, you know, that's, it's hard to kind of, it's kind of like facing the status quo, I yeah. guess, or like facing the, the ideal, like small town li- way of living yeah. and maybe the, the ideal way of understanding that, you know, maybe the way that we were doing things. Cause I, I, I feel like that with a lot of like environmental things. Oh, okay. So like I, even then I feel like, even just having to understand, like, sh- look what we did in the, in the, in the past. Mm-hmm. Look what we did to kind of get to where we are now. Mm-hmm. I feel that way with health. And I feel that way with the lifestyle is changing dramatically. Yeah. So, so that right there, I think, is hard to kind of reach and grasp the ideal change, mm-hmm. the ideal way to kind of say that there's a movement. Mm-hmm. And you're right about your voice. You're right that, you know, it takes a, a certain person, maybe a, a certain understanding for to find people that can maybe help them understand that there is a different mm-hmm. way to look at things. And I think it's just the backlash that they're going to get if yeah. they do. Yeah. And, and do you think that there's like a time stamp in that? Or do you feel I like... I think that if people are ready to change, they're ready to change. They're ready to change, yeah. right? Okay. Your, soul, your soul knows what you need. Yes. And if you're... Yes. If, if you come to a place in your journey where you're ready to listen to mm-hmm. that or um, y- you'll know. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think that's when people reach out for um, help, for help yeah. or, or um, assistance. So um, therapy, um, if, if, if people are in pain, that's when they're the most inclined to make the changes in their lifestyle. I feel like that's when people come to a crux in their, in their life. It's, I can either choose to ignore what my body is screaming, screaming to me. Screaming to you. Like, and, uh, yeah, like I'm aching. I'm Help aching. Me. There's like, something wrong. Something's got to change. And, um, and, and, you know, use the help to, uh, to get to that place, but also make the changes that brought them there right, in the first right, place. Right, right, I do agree with that. Or they can continue to, um, uh, you know, over-medicate or um, ignore or uh, stifle that, that inner dialogue. And that's where I, I think people can tap in. That That's the crux where people can tap into their intuition. Right. Um, and I think that generally when people are ready, they, they'll ask. They'll ask. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it goes even dramatic and maybe they have to. Like, yeah. let's just say a certain sickness yeah. or like a, they reach a certain point where they're like, I have a disease or yeah. I have cancer or I have this. And maybe it gets too late. And I think that's whenever they start changing the lifestyle. They start changing the the way that they view uh, health and how they, so uh, that's kind of like the way I see things happening environmentally yeah. or like maybe something drastic has to happen so people can wake up, people can look at it and individually as a health yeah. nut, like I just, I go, I, I'm an avid person that would say like, you gotta look at your health. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay to go and have a pizza every once in a while. It's Absolutely. not. It's not a daily thing. It's right. not something to kind of look at and say, mm, "Man, it's and it's hard." Because yeah. like college students and that like the way that we kind of process and like make um, kids believe that it's okay to take in all these sort of chemicals that yeah. kind of would alter our way of thinking or right. alter the way that we would start developing our bodies. And right. I think that's where I I started understanding a lot more of my history of like my yeah. history of how I would feel later on, and man, that's that's so intriguing. And you know, I, I think having a like a platform like this maybe to kind of get people to understand that it might not be mainstream, it might not be to a certain uh, dilemma to get like people to say, Oh, join the, the movement or mm-hmm. something like that. But it's just maybe to kind of have a sense of understanding of maybe you have to look at things this way yeah. differently, differently to 
look at a different path for you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that, we, we've hit on food a lot. What about like, let's just say I started like kind of doing a lot of like, meditation okay. and have you ever uh, do you look at a lot of yes. that do you yeah Talk absolutely about that. i think that um that kind of goes back to like my personal pie chart of health and oh, okay. helping people find their personal pie charts of health yeah. um, meditation is a huge one for me um you do meditate then yes oh, okay um, okay i also uh, delve a little bit with tai chi Ooh. i've never like had a tai chi uh you know teacher i've right. never um, done like a full Tai Chi gong cycle is what they, I hear they call it, but, um, tapping into some slow body movements while, um, I'm in making intentional, um, breathing, I'm breathing intentionally, like meditating, um, has been really healing. Um, and it's one of those things where, you know, if someone's feeling a lot of anxiety, I'm not going to say, all right, you're going to meditate for a week and do Tai Chi for three minutes before you go to bed. And by next week, you're going to be all better. It's, it's that whole body connection, but I guarantee you if somebody taps into that superpower of meditation yeah. for 30 days straight and comes back to us and so, and I guarantee you that there's going to be an improvement in their mental, emotional well-being, and then, uh, consequently their, their physical mm -hmm. well and spiritual well-being. Right. So, um, it's one of those things where you're really tapping into the parasympathetic of the nervous system. Um, so going back into nutrition really quick, if we eat processed sugar, it sends our body into a sympathetic state of being, which raises our cortisol levels, which are the stress gotcha. hormones. The stress and so hormones, yeah. basically for six hours, it puts our body into maybe a little more of shorter breaths where we're in our body is, uh, whether we, we notice it consciously or not, yeah. our body's in a little bit of a higher state of stress. Mm -hmm. So, um, Something as simple as having a you know a tablespoon yeah. of processed sugar. So and can you imagine ev adding everything else the 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 work stress the the um, relationship stress um, uh, things like going for barefoot walks and meditating every day are going to be pivotal for our health. You talk about you talk about like uh, everything a lot. Yeah. So so that's why I was grounding, I, yeah. So explain that like I, is that in the same realm as meditation? Like is it just yeah. like a kind of like sense senses like yeah something kind of like when you when you stand by the beach yes. um, experientially, you kind of take a deep breath and you're like I'm at peace right now. It's really hard to be stressed at the beach. Yeah, I mean yeah. I was at the beach two days ago, oh, so that's go. why I felt like it <laughs> probably felt like that. And yeah. and you're right about it. You get a sense of relief yeah. or like you get a like. Maybe it's just the way it sounds or yeah. like, I don't know what it is. It, well, scientifically, they say that when you're grounding your feet to the earth or you're earthing, as they call it, um, you're basically charging your body to the, uh, I think it's the negative ions. Okay. Um, so the, the earth naturally gives off mm -hmm. what maybe our body's battery would need to recharge. Ooh. And so science, there, there's a bit of scientific backing there, but I mean, we can all attest to the fact that if you put your feet on the ground outside and the birds are chirp chirping and the wind is blowing and the yeah. sun is shining and the rain is dropping you're going to be kind of where you need to be right in that moment right you know that's the thing i you know like a lot of how i would comprehend a, a, the way that the, the lifestyle that i live or like it's not as popular as everybody would do mm -hmm. or, or it's not as beneficial they think it's not as beneficial mm -hmm. or maybe they're just not that aware of like all the benefits that it could mm -hmm. do for you. And you know, you're going to get a lot of backlash on that also because people think, Oh man, these hippies, what right. are they talking about? Or like, what are they, yeah, this isn't going to help anybody. <laughs> and it, it, that's, that's, I, I totally agree because a, a lot of like a lot of the Chinese mm -hmm. kind of practices that they do with Indian, with meditations and, a lot of that on this fast paced world that we live in in America, it's, mm -hmm. it's very soothing and maybe relaxing to kind of just reflect, right. look back and do th those sort of practices to kind of balance out the fast paced living that you can never really grasp a, a sense of thought that goes into your mind. So then you start overthinking and you start stressing and yeah. you know, that's, it's hard to kind of really balance that lifestyle here so do you get a lot of that like how would you tell people to like oh put this into your daily like yeah. 
into your daily living, whether it is Tai Chi or whether yeah. it is like um, meditation or whether it is just going out and earthing. What, right. Yeah. How would you tell them to do like in the morning, yeah. in the afternoon, at night? You know, I think for everyone it's different, but I will say that we do here in our country adopt an overworking lifestyle. That's freaking crazy <laughs> how much crazy. we freaking work or like how much we would just want to go right. because nobody wants to sit at home, do right. nothing. Nobody wants to be at home and just say, um, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I need to go do something. And mm -hmm. they just kind of start going into this momentum, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And I, you know, you're right. Mm -hmm. Keep going with what you're saying. But I think that ultimately like we need to cultivate a lifestyle of fill in the blank. So you know, right. it's so much easier for me to say, Hey Johnny, it, it might be helpful for you if you meditate three times a week, but it maybe it's more helpful for me to say, hey, how can you cultivate a life of meditation? Or how can you uh, cultivate a life where you are um, easily meditating right. or making these small choices to impact your health? Okay, yeah. You know, so um, so it's, it, it all comes down to small choices. But, um, <clears throat> and so, so I guess like, um, you know, ask your partner or uh, a family member mm -hmm. or a friend, um, hey, do you want to go for a walk where we're, just hanging out right. and talking every Monday at, at 8 a.m. There you go. You have that on the map. And every yeah. Monday at 8 a.m., you're taking a walk with your friend for an hour. Yeah. Um, so I think it's cultivating cultivating those things. Um, how do you recharge when you move? For some people, that's working out. For other people, that's walking. For other people, that's um, doing the sport of their choice, playing yeah. basketball. Uh, some people will never find themselves in the gym, but but they'll be playing basketball on the courts for yeah. you know two hours if they could. Yeah. So some it's people cultivating. Just do that. dancing. If some people dance. Yeah. yeah it's there just, you go. It's just it's true. something that a lot of people just staying active. I mean, right. as, as kind of the message you're trying to say yeah. there. Yeah. I agree with that, and I think um, like I don't know what the number one killer in the United States is. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know like how far we are with like is it obesity mm -hmm. is it like something to do with health maybe can't i don't know mm -hmm. but i would assume that obesity would be up there what i'm trying to say is like the f the future of a lot of the stuff that's going to happen medically mm -hmm. has a lot to do with how we're going to process maybe pills maybe mm -hmm. we like they the way that they would prescribe a certain thing or maybe right. And maybe people aren't going to need it as much, or maybe people are going to overdose on it. And, you know, there's a whole dilemma with that. What I'm really trying to say is, do you feel like it's it's going to get to the point where it's just going to be, you know, I would rather just take a pill to lose weight, a pill to make me feel better than to do all of these other mm -hmm. things. Yeah, I actually think it's already gotten there. You really think so? I do. I think it's. I think it has gotten there. Um, I think... You know, and, and I also don't want to invalidate the experience for people who are in pain um, to right. take medication. I right. think, you know, that can be, a, you know, a huge part of the journey. But I think if we medicate, but then we don't tackle what brought us to that place of dysfunction, right. that's when I think we're going to just be stuck. We're going to stick ourselves um, and, and our in, we're going to stifle our intuition and, you um, maybe kind of like stick ourselves in in growth yeah um emotionally mentally physically spiritually um so yeah i do i do think it's already kind of gotten there man uh, I, how would you it's just like how would you help or how would you all i want to do is yeah. really just help like, uh, yeah. whether it's be my journey because i do put out what i can to keep right. a optimistic positive way of thinking yeah i was in a place where it was like i big mm -hmm. do all this stuff you look at look, look at the the type of success that you could have mm -hmm. or the type of if you kind of look upon yourself and do these sort of things i'm not a doctor i yeah. can't do that for people I, right. mean, I can't but i can share my stories with them i can share the hurt yeah. the, the pain that i i i would feel when i i've done these sort of right. things and you know that's uh, maybe it's just insecurities or maybe it's something small mm -hmm. and like just looking past all of those things is it is a mind thing right and you're right you're right like I, it, I think it has gotten to a certain point where it's it's i think it's not that far to where we can back up and say you know we can back up and mm -hmm. do it all over again but there's a lot of things now that i think are going to be so fast and so so sudden that i don't know if it's going to be 
because of business or because of the way that the mm -hmm. American way of thinking is this way. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that people want to live longer. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, you know, here's, here's the reality. You talked about change that you made in your life. Right. Nobody did that but you. So that was something that you had to reach in and do. Um, and I think that um, you talked, you know, about sharing those, like, genuine, authentic experiences. I think it does come from from us making, everybody making the choice to show up and be vulnerable. Right. Um, you know, having conversations like this, grassroots type movement where we're having one-on-ones mm -hmm. and saying, yeah. this is what helped me in my journey. This is what helped me in my health journey. This is what helped me in my mental health journey, you know, um, and creating those uh, communities and conversations yeah. um, uh, and dialogues for right. us to have. Right. But ultimately, the the crazy and simple yet complex reality is that people have to make that change themselves. change themselves yeah. yeah and I think you know coming from um, a social work background so a helping field uh, myself and then also kind of still itching to um, help people make change yeah coming to that understanding uh, myself has been really helpful for the success of my clients right um, when I say I'm I can't lift their legs for them I can't right I right, can tell right. them hey I think it'd be a really good idea for you to drink X amount of water at least X amount of water a day but it's up to them to to do it you you can bring a horse to the water but you can't make them drink so. make them drink and everybody has that power within them though. yeah and it's tough it's tough to kind of really get people to to not think a certain way or not maybe even just force them because it's yeah. not about like it's just making them not even agree but motivating them inspiring them to do these sort of things mm -hmm. to to kind of know that that is probably the way that you can benefit your life yeah and like i know a lot of maybe the what i listen to i do listen to a lot of motivational mm -hmm. speakers and like tony robbins great guy yeah, great very nice. very nice and he brings up a lot about meditation mm -hmm. but he, like the, his sense of lifestyle i think has kind of reached uh, a certain inspirational being that you can go and feel this sort of liveliness power that he sort of takes on he he sort of brings it to you mm -hmm. and says this can help you be, be a lot more positive maybe mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, success and be yeah. more open to uh like doing a business making making maybe getting that promotion at work maybe doing all of these things but it all starts with the energy mm -hmm. the health the and i think that's even i heard um who was it um gary v talking mm -hmm. about he's like my main he's like i love what i do but my main priority is health is my is my well-being my like my kids well-being my yeah. my my wife's well-being and i feel like that would be a primary factor in everybody's agenda is yeah. to know that you take care of your health yeah. like that it, it's maybe it's a little bit of hard love to kind of tell people that but um maybe just looking at past like their family's history or just seeing like where it's sort of heading mm -hmm. and see all these little clicks here and there to kind of say what can i do to be more active what can i do to right. do these things that kind of implement in my life to kind of benefit me in the long run yeah and you know that's awesome like i think even your message and how you're trying to present your whole holistic view and you know i'd one i'd love to actually know how you do things so that's why i'm like let's do this i want to see and mm -hmm. kind of be a part of that so that and even just having you here to talk and that's 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 all gotten to get an understanding of maybe there's other ways to kind of help people mm -hmm. maybe it's not the like the fitness route first maybe mm -hmm. it's to kind of get the health route first right and um you know i, I just want to see what you would say if if people would have come up to you and kind of say if you know you're wrong you're wrong about this you know how how do you handle that backlash when it comes to yeah this being how maybe it is your goal to kind of reach out and to help whoever wants it yeah how would you how would you deal with that that's a good question i think i have received maybe a little bit of contention amongst people who don't eat right have in the same way that i do yeah so that kind of goes along with um yeah. you know the the diet choices that i make and that i think you know are healthy um i think number one uh you brought up what what i call self-care yeah um so um and i think that's really important learning and knowing how to nurture ourselves and nourish ourselves first 
is um, pivotal for us to be able to offer that to other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know that a lot of people um, kind of have, you know, have that backwards. I know that in, in the past I had that backwards. It, mm-hmm. I wanted to help people that I forgot about myself. And um, oh, in the I end, see, yeah. nobody won. So, uh, you know, nobody wins with that perspective. So um, if we are nurturing and nourishing um, and, and knowing who we are, where we come from, and we're knowing that we're responsible for our own actions and kind of being empowered out of that and caring for ourselves, then I think we're able to care for others. But um, I do know that when people have maybe had different opinions than, yeah. than me, I think that uh, I personally feel like I've come a long way in knowing that I'm caring for myself in the best way I can. So the differences don't bother me. Um, um, you know, the the difference in opinion of lifestyle or habits. I know that um, this is what I feel like my body needs now. Right. It may look different in you know ten years. My body um, may be asking me to. Um, you know, try this, di- you know, kind of lifestyle or diet uh, for a year or, ta- or remove this from my diet for a little yeah. bit. It might re- react to something um, that I've been uh, having a lot of. So my body's kind of backlashing. But um, and so for that, I, I think kind of being more of like a duck in water, um, just letting it slide off my feathers has been a helpful tool to have in the tool belt. Um, but I also, I also think that comes from that dogmatic perspective. When we say this is how it should be for us forever and this is how it should be for you too, mm-hmm. that's when we turn down the volume on our intuition. Because right. if our intuition in a year counter, count, contradicts yeah. what we believe, we won't listen if we're set in our ways. Mm. So I think um, with that, just you know, being confident and in, in, empowered in the choices that I make for myself, but also respecting the differences with others. Yeah. Wow, Jay, that was inspirational. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. No, see, that that is a lot of what people, I think, scream for inside of their minds. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's what people want are really wanting is to kind of tell them, like, okay, maybe I need to do this. or yeah. and, it, and now it's up to them. You're kind of putting the ball in their court. Mm-hmm. And you let them kind of do what they have to do, like their due diligence to kind of look at the research and say, maybe I have to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I... I I really like when I came and talked to you and I was like, oh, my gosh, like you actually have a lot of intu- intuition with a lot of this stuff. Thank you for coming on. Like, I really do appreciate all of that. And this nice little picture right here, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is hers. Do you want to talk about that? Because I don't even know, like, how yeah, to kind um, of explain that. This is from an herb garden in my backyard. So I picked uh, five herbs here and took a picture. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I this is me just trying to um, get as close to the, the food source as possible. Yeah, okay. But, That's awesome. But, yeah, it's been great chatting with you, and it, I, I appreciate it, I, the space. No, and I really do appreciate you coming on and kind of giving them, uh, people a different perspective of looking at health. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you definitely you can come back whenever you want. That's the one thing I was just like, oh, my gosh, this, there's a lot of stuff that maybe we didn't hit on here. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of great stuff that we did hit on and i do really appreciate it i know my audience will appreciate it and i know this could help you kind of broaden out your perspective on trying to reach out a lot of different people Mm -hmm. and you know i think that's both of our missions now and i think that's kind of getting to the point where you know what say what you need to say even if it's gonna offend or not be the right way to kind of say it yeah and you know jade i really do appreciate you coming on thank you ladies and gentlemen this is jade dinsdale do you have like do you want to throw out your plug so people know where to find you on Instagram yeah. or anything like that? Yeah, you can find me um, on Instagram at jade.holisticcoach. That simple. Yeah. But <laughs> folks, this is Jade Dinsdale. I really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you for joining us on Johnny Reviews. I would invite her uh, back and whenever she wants, ladies and gentlemen. This is another topic that I would start talking about because health should be a priority in everybody's lives. And I do bring out a lot of what I've been through and what she's been through and what everybody else has been through. But that's the whole purpose of this channel is to kind of bring out a lot of different perspectives. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you. I would really do appreciate it. Join us. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Join us on this nice little journey I call Johnny Reviews Podcast, guys. Later. i see you later, guys. Thank Bye-bye. you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>